Schwitz, uh, Alan Dershowitz, Harvard Law professor and the author of a great book. It is called The Case Against Impeaching Trump. He joins us live from Martha's Vineyard. Uh, professor, you know, uh, people are hearing this, this uh, exchange that was recorded secretly by Mr. Cohen, and they're going, uh, I don't know exactly what's going on. You've heard it. Is anything illegal? H have any crimes been committed in what we have heard so far? Uh, not even a close question. There's no crime. This was a conversation between a lawyer and a client that should never have been heard, uh, even if, even if, and the tape is unclear, uh, Trump raised the word cash. There was then a discussion, and the lawyer said, no, 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 and President Trump said, no, we'll, we'll do it by check. Lawyers and clients have those conversations all the time. I've had conversations like that with clients. The end result is cash was not used, no payments were made. The context of the tape, all suggests that the president wanted it to be papered. They wanted it to be a corporation, not just a payment. He wanted to make sure it was done right. He wanted to make sure it was done with records. And so I think the big picture is no crime. It sounds like Cohen is not as loyal to the president as he once was. It also suggests that uh, this conversation never should have been heard by any of us. Right. Why? And uh, Cohen should not have recorded a conversation. You know, you trust your lawyer to have a discreet conversation so that you can lay out all the possibilities and then decide what to do. The end result is no payments were made, no cash was given, and so this is a big deal about nothing. How does an attorney get away with this then? What happened to client attorney privilege? Are you allowed to just tell everyone what your client told you in confidence? Isn't that illegal or do you lose your, your license? What's the consequence if, for that? If, if in fact, this material was originally leaked by Cohen when it was still privileged. Remember, a judicial officer found it to be privileged. It then was leaked. Only after it was leaked did Giuliani waive the privilege as to this in order to protect the privilege as to any other possible mm. conversations. If Cohen is the source of the leak, he has a serious problem, but we don't know who the source of the leak is. Right. That's right. one of the things I think we have to get to the bottom of. Alan, are you, are you, I was under the belief, and I think you were too last night, that, that Rudy Giuliani could have stopped it and didn't. Well, he obviously had a tactical decision to go the way he went, that is to waive the privilege and to make a statement as to what's mm -hmm. on the tape. He could have taken a different tact. He could have said, this is, he did say, this is outrageous, and he could have sought a hearing to determine who leaked it and to have right. it suppressed. But he didn't take that Why? tack because he believes he believes that the tape is exculpatory and helps Trump. Right. I think reasonable people could disagree about that. And we'll never know for sure what the words are until we have a forensic analysis. The other key thing is that the tape ends abruptly, which means that Cohen either mm -hmm. erased what he didn't want anybody to hear uh, afterward or he cut it off abruptly because he didn't want anybody right. to hear it. A forensic expert can determine why it was cut off so abruptly and give us a better sure. chance of what the words are from both sides. Well, here are the words. The, uh, the president's legal team has just put out their transcript, and it reads like this. Michael Cohen says, and I spoke to Alan about it, when it comes time for the financing, which will be, and then Donald Trump says, wait a sec, what financing? And Michael Cohen says, well, I'll have to pay him something. And Donald Trump says, don't pay with cash, dot, 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 check. And Michael Cohen talks over the uh, president, now president, and says, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Well, let me be very clear, first of all. I am not the Alan. It's a different Alan we're talking about. <laughs> uh, number two, you know, it remains to be seen. I had a case just like this some years ago where the issue was whether the cop said it's done on wiretaps or it's mm -hmm. not on wiretaps. And the Court of Appeals listened to the tape about 20 times, finally ruled in my favor. This is a, an issue for forensics. But I think whatever was said, the context strongly suggests the president right. wanted it to be done through a corporate structure. Corporations don't send cash. Corporations right. send checks or wires. So the context supports the president's view, regardless of what the words themselves say. Uh, but in the end... Right. This was a lawyer conversation, and in the end, the president decided to do it the way the lawyer wanted to do it, and it wasn't done at all. So there's no crime here. There's no impeachable offense here. And if you read my book, you'll see that you can't impeach a president 
just because you don't like a conversation he may have had with his lawyer. Right, and it's a candidate, Trump, and he's businessman Trump, whatever you thought before. He isn't President Trump. Uh, yeah. Michael Avenatti came in and said, Mr. Davis is a good lawyer, but his client Cohen is not innocent, nor is he a victim. He's a co-conspirator, dishonest thug who continues to refuse to come clean and do the right thing. They are playing you and aiming for a pardon. Where is the rest of the evidence and tapes? The answer to that is Lane Davis has more tapes to come. Real quick on Avenatti's comments. Well, you know, he is representing a client and people will have to judge whether he is doing a good job or not. But uh, you know, one has to know whether he was the source of, of the leak as well, because he claimed to have known that there were 12 tapes before that fact was known publicly. Right. So mm -hmm. he had some questions to answer. Look, I don't want to get into a personal thing with Avenatti, because uh, he's not a central character mm -hmm. uh, in this. The central lawyers now are Rudy Giuliani and, La and Lanny Davis, both uh, excellent lawyers with long experience and long histories, and both of them have strategic decisions mm -hmm. that they've made. Yep. And I'm not in a position yet to judge the strategic decisions because we don't know all the exactly. facts. So all the right. first step is forensic analysis. The second is mm -hmm. context. But I think it's clear no crimes were committed on this particular yeah. day. And if you have Alan Dershowitz in your secret Santa, don't get him a plaque. He's got plenty. Look behind him. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. Uh, How Alan, many awards do you have? That's great. Uh, uh, Alan, uh, thank uh, you very much for thanks, joining us. Alan. Oh, boy, what a morning, right? You can imagine if there are, Julie, uh, dozens, perhaps, or at least a dozen such taped conversations, you can imagine how you could snippet this story to death between now and the 2020 election, which might explain why the president is out on Twitter this morning asking the simple question, why on earth would Michael Cohen tape their conversations? Let me take you to the president's favorite social media platform where he said this, what kind of lawyer would tape a client? So sad. Is this a first? Never heard of it before. Why was the tape so abruptly terminated, cut, while I was presumably saying positive things? I hear there are other clients and many reporters that are taped. Can this be so? Too bad. Here's a clip from one such recording, again, about, uh, we believe, about that alleged payment to sort of finish off that catch-and-kill story about the president, then private citizen Trump's alleged tryst with a model about a dozen years ago. Listen here. I need to open up a company for the transfer of all of that info regarding our friend David, you know, so yeah. that... I'm going to do that right away. I've actually come up and I've spoken to me, and I've spoken to Alan Weisselberg about how to set the whole thing up uh, with so what are we gonna funding. That, uh, yes, um, and it's all the stuff, all the stuff, because you know you never know where that company, no, you never know where he's going to be. Gets it, but Correct. So I'm I'm all over that, and I spoke to Alan about it when it comes time for the financing, which will be listen. What financing? We'll have to. Pay me. So, no, 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 no. I got no, no, no. So you heard the words cash and check there. There's a dispute, obviously, in typical Washington fashion. Two people can hear the very same thing, Julie, and hear wildly different things at the very same time, have incredibly different interpretations. Here's the president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani. What it makes clear is this is uh, at most an attempt to do something. I don't know of any attempt in this category of of crime that they're looking at. So in, in any event, I don't think anyone can suggest that this represents anything where the president did anything wrong. Now, for his part, Mr. Cohen's attorney, Lanny Davis, the longtime Clinton attorney and advisor, said that he's going to call out Giuliani for misleading people about what was said in that conversation. Here's Lanny Davis this morning. I say to everybody who voted for Donald Trump, don't believe me, I'm a Democrat. Listen to the tape. The words don't pay are not heard the word cash so it's not about cash versus not cash it's about truth and the power of the truth is what michael cohn now has and we are off and running on another busy day here at the white house for the record we have reached out to white house officials and they've been consistent julie in telling us they're going to send all inquiries over to rudy giuliani and the president's legal team back to you i hope now. you're wearing your running shoes this morning you're yes, gonna need them. all right <laughs> Chris Starwalt, he's Fox News politics editor and editor of Halftime Report. Um, you and I did our podcast earlier, the I'll Tell You What podcast, it will post later today, and we both said it sort of feels like we're back in the 90s when Lanny Davis, uh, a good lawyer, somebody who's been great for Democrats, a, maybe a curious choice for Michael Cohen 
for him to be his oh, lawyer? I, I think, well, first of all, I, I don't know about you, but I feel like I need a shower after hearing Griff's hit. It's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, he hello 2018. Uh, I think Lanny Davis is in a lot of ways a good choice for Cohen who is uh, looking for someone who, like Giuliani, will litigate this in the court of public opinion, oh. uh, who is media savvy, because this isn't about your actual legal abilities. It's about leaking. It's about shaping the story. It's about disparagement. It's about all of this, all, all of the befoulment that we, can, mm. that we can summon is all part of this process. And Lanny Davis uh, navigated those swampy waters very effectively for the Clintons, for another president who was uh, a, a head of administration right. that was in the grip of this so kind of and stuff. you bring that up, and uh, Lanny Davis said this to Axios, Michael is going to tell the truth to the powers that be and let the chips fall where they may. I'm not saying there are more tapes as telling as <laughs> this one, but there are more tapes. There is more to come. We, so we have seen this before. Well, people say there's, um, you know, we're going to have more, and then people sort of have this expectation that it's going to be bigger and more salacious than that one, which isn't really even that much. And so... Will Lanny Davis, you know, overpromise and underdeliver on the communications here? I bet we'll watch and find out. True. Um, <laughs> the, that, so, so he's getting what he wants in that way already. Uh, look, we have a president who prides himself on being able to blow up the news cycle. And if he's having a bad week or a bad day, or as happened after the Helsinki blow up, uh, let's change the discussion. I'm going to throw some grenades out there and we're going to just change what we're talking about. I'm going to say or do something that sounds crazy and everybody will go to that bright, shiny object. He is not accustomed to this, which is somebody else doing it to him. Yeah. And, well, that's, okay. and that's what Tony and, and Davis point, are doing though, to him. You know, so we know that we, I don't expect the politics to change at all, that you know, I don't think the Republicans will be moved either way or the Democrats will be moved either way. My question is, though, th that uh, does this actually provide some sympathy for President Trump? that an attorney-client relationship is something where you think that you should be able to trust someone. And the president tweets, what kind of lawyer would do this? Yes, one he hired. That is what kind of lawyer would do it. And Michael Cohen never held himself out, by the way, to be a good guy. Michael Cohen previously held himself out. He said that he was like, I forget the name, is a fictional character. Uh, he said that he was like this villain from a TV show who does illegal things to get his clients off. Uh, Ray Donovan, I think, is the character's name. Mm -hmm. uh, that, he, that I do bad things uh, in the name of my clients. You want me. I'm a fixer. And he embraced that role of being rotten on Trump's behalf, the most loyal and the most ardent in the defense of the president. Uh, the, the means be damned. In this case... He is now, the president says, how dare you do this stuff? And it's like, well, but this is who he is. That's why you hired him in the first place. But what's interesting is I think about Michael Cohen and where does he go from here? I don't know if yeah. this gets the Southern District of New York off his back. I don't think anybody who supports President Trump today will be looking forward to hiring Michael Cohen in the future. <laughs> and I don't think anyone on the left will trust to hire him either. So he's in quite a fix of his own making. Well, he is, but we don't know how deep his fix is from a criminal uh, prosecution standpoint. We don't know just how we, we have some intimations that it may be that his exposure uh, to potential prison time may be quite real. We mm -hmm. don't know how deep that is, and that may be changing his perspective. Okay, Chris Dyer, well, thank you. You bet. Let's analyze what we think we know right now. The judge, Anna Napolitano, Fox News senior judicial analyst with me in studio. And Judge, nice to see you. Good morning, Bill. Uh, Giuliani's case, no payments ever made. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Giuliani's case, no indication of any crime. Is there? There doesn't appear to be the indication of any crime, but I think that's the wrong analysis. There is an indication of a fraud, and the significance of that is if the client and the lawyer discuss the commission of a crime or discuss the commission of a fraud, there is no attorney-client privilege in that conversation, meaning the tape can be used by anybody who can get their hands on it for any purposes. Which it's would the, include? Which would include Bob uh, Mueller? McDougal if she's suing the president, which would include Bob Mueller if he's investigating the president. Now, what's the fraud? The conversation is about paying uh, national, it's about paying National Enquirer to pay McDougal $150,000 to buy her story and to lead her to believe that the National Enquirer is going to publish her story. But the real uh, aim here is to bury the story 
by duping her into selling it to them and then not publishing it. That failure to be truthful to her and the involvement of Donald Trump and Michael Cohen in that decision is the fraud. You say that's not a criminal fraud. It's a civil fraud. That's a fraud. civil fraud. And but what is the difference? Criminal fraud is where you dupe somebody out of cash to enrich yourself. Civil fraud is when you dupe somebody out of cash for some other purpose. The other purpose here was to keep the story from being put in the press by lying to her and telling her, we'll pay $150,000, you don't talk to anybody else, and we'll publish your story when they never intended to Based publish it. Based on that analysis, criminal is more severe than civil. Absolutely. Is it not? Yes, of course it is. But both civil fraud, criminal fraud, are enough to burst the attorney-client privilege. That's where the Giuliani argument fails and the Lanny Davis argument prevails. Two more questions. Rights were never bought to the story on behalf of the Trump team, correct? And the story was well, the never the story was never printed. Right. Does that give a fair explanation for what was happening here? As I understand it, and I could be wrong, the money went from some source, Michael Cohen, Donald Trump, to the newspaper, to Ms. Uh, McDougal. She believed she was selling her story to be published. Because they misled her, there was never an intention to publish it. That transaction was fraudulent. Were laws broken here? Campaign finance laws? That, was, was anything okay, here done that was I, illegal? That, that is an analysis for Mueller to make. If the purpose of this was to help the campaign, campaign finance laws were broken. But that, too, is not a crime. It's, it's a violation of a statute, but it's not a criminal statute. So does that statute. mean Giuliani's right in his defense so far? Giuliani is correct in that there is no uh, criminal violation. He is incorrect by uh, not addressing the fact that this is a fraud, because he knows that crimes and fraud both vitiate the attorney-client privilege. There are 12 audio tapes, I do believe, that apparently God, God Cohen only, gave to the feds. God only knows what else is in there. Now, Cohen didn't give anything to the feds. And they took the feds seized his office. It. Right, right. And I'll make this even more complex, Rudy waived the attorney-client privilege with respect to this tape because he believes that this tape helps the president. It helps the president in that there's no crime. It hurts the president in that there's an obvious fraud. Do you think the president has something to worry about here? Yes. Do you? you do? Yes, I do. Based on? If there's no attorney-client privilege, then all his communications about these subject matters with Michael Cohen go right to Bob Mueller and to do with whatever he's going to do with it. Thank you, Judge. We'll You're see where it goes on. next. My regards to you and the passing of your 92-year-old oh, hero, your father, thank Andy you, Bill. Napolitano, this thank week. Thank you. And thank you for coming yesterday. Thank Good you. Good to be with you and your family. Thank you, Bill. Thank you.